What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today is day three of 30 days of flutter. So once again, just decided to put together another video for you guys. And today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over and creating one of my very first apps. So the app is actually going to be called easy read and all it's going to do is it's going to show text that you can edit and it's going to be able to actually change the size of that text so it can be extremely large so you can show it on any device and hold it up and somebody can see it from very far away. The reason why I made this app was because my late grandfather uh, was actually hard of hearing and I wanted to have a way of communicating with him without yelling at him. So I actually made this app out of necessity when I was first starting out and it was the very second app that I released to the app store. So I wanted to show you this app because I wanted to show just how easy it is to get an app into the app store. Now you may have to do a little bit of modification to make it a slightly more unique than this now that it's been so many years, but it is relatively easy to get an app into the app store. And that's what we're gonna be covering today. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and jump right on in. All right, so as you can see, we just have our starter app and we have our my app right here, which is a stateful widget. And then we have my app state nothing that we haven't dealt with before. If you haven't dealt with this before, make sure you go back and watch the other videos. But anyways, what we need to do is we need to create a text field, a multi-line text field that is going to allow the user to enter in some input. So let's go ahead and add that in now. All right, so we have our text field there. And the last time that we used a text field, we used it with a controller. Now, the reason why we created the controller last time was because we were planning on interacting with whatever the user had entered in. In this app, we actually don't need to do anything with the text. We just need to display it and that's it. So we don't need a controller this time. But what we do want to um, make sure that we have is the ability to dismiss the keyboard because when they're typing, we wanna be able to have it clear away the keyboard and show the full screen. So we we can do that with an input action. So for text input action, we're passing in dot done, and that's going to have the keyword done at the bottom right hand corner of the keyboard, but it's also going to dismiss the keyboard whenever the user taps it. So instead of being able to let them enter in like um, new lines, we're just gonna simply dismiss the keyboard. Next, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that our text or our font size is really large. So let's change that. All right, so we have our style set to text size, font size is 40. Now, if we go ahead and run this, we should actually be able to see our text field show up and we should be able to start typing in it. So it's up here at the top and if we just go ahead and start typing it, we can see that our text is really large. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we're not gonna just keep going all the way to the right. We want to make sure that it's a multi-line text field and in order to fix that, we need to change the max number of lines. So now we set max lines to null, and if we go ahead and save this, we should be able to see that our text is now wrapping around. So now if we continue to write in here, we can see that it's continuing to wrap down. And right now I'm typing on my keyboard, but what happens if we're typing with our uh, iOS keyboard? And as you can see, if I have something right here, I could just keep adding in words like this, and then when I hit done, it dismisses. So that's the exact behavior that we've been looking for. Next, what we want to do is we want to focus on the font size, right? So this is kind of large font for like a regular app, but if you were intending on having somebody read this from the palm of your hand from like across the room or something like that, or just making it generally easier to read, then what we need to do is we need to be able to scale this, this uh, font size up. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this text field in a column so that we can have uh, a slider underneath it at the bottom of our screen right here and adjust the font size from there. So here we go. We have our text field wrapped inside of a column now and we have a slider below it, but the slider requires a value. It needs to know exactly where it stands. And then we also need to be able to update that slider. So up here at the top of my app state, let's go ahead and add um, a, a property that will hang on to the current value of the slider. And there we go. So now we have this uh, font size property, which we just set to 40. You could do whatever you want with that number. But what we wanna do is we want to have the slider be directly correlated to this, and we could just pass it in right here. So this will read 
the font size and it will show where the thumb is on the slider so that the user can know like where they are at on the on the range and then we also want to make sure that our text style is um, passing in the font size as well all right there we go and then we have our on changed function or our on changed argument that we need to pass in and this is a function or it's expecting a function that passes in a double so we need to take in the new value and then update the font size all right, so we like really nice tight code and we do this in one line. So we have the on change is gonna pass in a new size. It's gonna be of type double. And then we need to make sure that since we are going to be changing the state, we need to let Flutter know that with the set state function. And we can do our logic in here, which is gonna be the font size is equal to the new size. Let's go ahead and save that. And right now we have a problem and that's because we don't have a minimum and max value. So you can actually see that it's trying to tell you right here what the problem is we need to have a minimum value and a max value so that we know like what are the endpoints of our slider and how far can this font size go can it go up to a million well obviously not so let's go ahead and uh, clamp that down so let's add that as another argument in our slider all right there we go so we have the minimum size and we have the maximum size so the minimum size is 30 maximum size is 200 looking good so as you can see, we have the slider all the way up here at the top and our text field is still here and we can go ahead and keep entering in words and it will continue to grow. But this isn't really the, the functionality that we want because as you can see, we're not gonna have like a consistent space for our slider and then it also causes this problem to happen once it uh, once the view like goes out of frame um, and our keyboard is covering it. So what we need to do is we need to fix that by creating our text field to be inside of a, a expanded widget and that's going to make sure that the the text field is as busy, big as it can get and then whenever there's more text it's simply just going to continue to scroll all right so as you can see we have this expanded widget uh, wrapping our text field and if we go ahead and start typing you can see that the slider is already at the bottom but if i start typing in everything's going to be able to just continue to go it's going to continue to scroll down and scroll down and we can see that we're not going to get that weird you know warning on our screen which is really good so let's go ahead and try to change the size of our font which is really cool because now we can just see everything so it's looking really good it, it, this is pretty much the exact experience that we have on um on my app easy read one thing that we need to take care of is the fact that you see how it's going up here into like the widget area? We want to make sure that we're avoiding that and that's called the safe area. The way that we can avoid that is by wrapping our column in a safe area widget. So let's just go ahead and refactor that as well. All right, so we wrapped it in, a, we wrapped our column in a safe area and now if we try to type, we should see that we're not going all the way up into that area where like the the clock is and the wi-fi signal so we're a lit we're allowed to like just completely avoid it going up there and like causing this weird look to our app so that's pretty much all we have to do for this app and as you can see if you were to like turn it on its side you can see that the app is still working like it's really cool because you could just say done i could turn this all the way up the app crashes when you have a, <laughs> I wonder what, I wonder what it was going to try to tell me. But as you can see, this is like a really useful thing, um, kind of like an accessibility app. And if you really want to just check out the fact that this app is on the App Store, I have it pulled up right here. You can find it on the iOS App Store. It's called Easy Read. It's been up there for like five years, five, six years or something like that. And I've never updated it. It's just version 1.0. Um, I don't really care to promote it. There's no in-app purchases. It's not. It doesn't cost anything. But I leave it up there just to show you how easy it is to get into the App Store. Because once you get into the App Store, you're going to feel much more confident about your abilities to code. And it's probably going to help you keep going down this really long journey that you have in front of you. So that's going to be it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any uh, topics that you want me to cover, make sure you leave them in the comments down below below. Uh, any projects that you want to cover in this next 30 days, let me know down below. Now go out there and keep coding passionately.